What's up, I'm Rob, this is Man Vs. Pin, the show where I find amazing looking pins over on Pinterest and make them a reality. Sometimes. Most of the times. So... I've been a big fan of Google Earth map art for a really long time. So when I saw these pins of huge Google map walls, I totally wanted to give it a try. Unfortunately, I have absolutely no wall space at my own house. So when our good friends over at YouTube Nation asked us to come and deck out their new studios, we took the opportunity. A grand total of 18 feet worth of wall space. Let's get started. This shouldn't take that long. Let's get down to the materials that we'll need for this project. First and foremost, you're gonna need some sort of projector. They make small ones that you could hook up to your computer or you can kick it old school and go the route that I did with the overhead projector. You remember those kind growing up. Now, if you get something like this, you're going to need some transparency paper to print your image on. Before you do this, make sure you know which kind of transparency paper is right for your home printer. Next, you're gonna to need to source your image from Google Earth or Google Maps. Since I'm doing two walls, I'll need two different images that match up side by side. To give it more of a personal touch, these images are of the surrounding office space that I'm currently working in. Paint-wise, you could do this a couple ways. I'm using these awesome Molotow acrylic paint markers. These are refillable, which is super convenient when you're working with walls this size. Sharpie also makes these poster paint markers, which come in a variety of sizes and might be easier for you to find. Other supplies include some masking tape, a yardstick ruler, a regular ruler, some additional white paint, black paint, random paint brushes, and all that good stuff that comes along with painting walls. Oh yeah, and most importantly, a f ton of patience. First things first, you're gonna wanna paint your walls a dark color. Painting over mistakes on a darker wall is a hell of a lot easier than painting over mistakes on a white wall. And trust me, with a mural this size, there's gonna be some mistakes. Now once the walls are all black, you'll line up your projector and project your image on one wall at a time. All right, the first thing I did was I began to outline the larger sections of the map with masking tape. Things like freeways, rivers, and larger roads that are thick and require a good amount of white paint, I marked out using the tape so that I could use straight up white paint. No use wasting those expensive white acrylic paint markers. Next, with those acrylic paint markers and my ruler, I drew out the largest, most identifiable buildings and structures. Then I filled in the masking tape with white paint, and while it dried, continued to outline some of the largest structures and buildings. One of the most rewarding parts is removing the masking tape, and you'll see all those crisp, clean lines come to life. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Once you get past the larger outlines, you'll probably want to print out a smaller map that you could work off of so that you can start with the smaller buildings and shapes. Now by the end of this thing, you and that ruler are going to be best friends. It's going to be like a new appendage. Now you could do it freehand if you like, but the straight up lines are going to look a thousand times better and more professional. Now, it honestly would have taken me like two years to finish this wall if I had paid attention to every single building, house, wall, and swimming pool. So instead, I simply made a grid for all the smaller points of interest. You know, things like neighborhoods and large clusters of houses. This is really the easiest part and just requires some simple gridding. Now, to tell you the truth, after the first wall was complete, I was hesitant about starting the second wall, since this one almost took me three days. But I said f*** it and started the second one anyways. Again, I busted out the masking tape and started to create the larger lines. Now I was in luck because this part of the map actually had a lot of open land and vacant lots, so it was a little easier than the other wall. Now the larger that you blow up these maps, the easier and less time consuming it's going to be, especially if you're trying to accomplish a huge space like this. Drawing, drawing, painting, rulering, drawing, straight lines. Ugh. It gets repetitive after a while, but keep with it. Oh yeah, and here's kind of like the biggest thing. While you're doing this, don't worry if things aren't 100% exact. The truth is, no one's gonna look at the map and say some shit like, Oh, that's not exactly accurate, and these lines aren't blah blah blah, and that building is bigger than me. And if somebody does say that, tell them to go f*** themselves. I like to say that it's open to artist interpretation, so that way you give yourself a little bit of leeway. Once it's done, clean up any sloppy lines or mistakes that you may have made with some extra paint. After five long days, this project was finally over and by far one of the toughest, longest pins that I have ever had to complete. But at the end of the day, both of these walls look amazing together. After everything was dry, we added some furniture to the mix and the new YouTube Nation offices had an incredible new lobby. If you have a pin that you want me to try, be sure to leave it in the comments below. And to check out more from the amazing YouTube Nation, be sure to click anywhere here, I imagine. We'll see you next time.